are you looking to slim down for summer? Well, did you know there are four essential components to weight loss? And here to explain is Dr. Frank Dockler from Healthy One Weight Loss. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So Dr. Frank, the temps are rising, swimming pools are opening up, mm -hmm. and some people might be saying, oh, I'm not ready to get into that swimsuit. <laughs> and get out there in public and show the body. So there are four different things that we can do to kind of get on the path of looking and feeling our best. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we teach this within our office, and, and, and also it's part of our, our, our whole uh, um, philosophy, if you will. One, you have to have a plan. And, and I think too many people go into uh, dieting, they, they just decide, okay, I want to lose 20 pounds, and have no idea how they're going to get there. Sure. You know, you wouldn't take a trip without looking at a map or looking something up and figuring out your route. So right. you have to have some kind of plan. Uh, you have to ha be educated. You have to educate yourself on what's right for you as an individual. Not everything is good for everybody. Some people can't do keto or paleo or, or even caloric uh, restriction. So you gotta be careful about what you do there. Uh, you need someone to support you. And, and, and not just support you, sometimes you just don't need somebody there to sabotage you. Right. you know, your friends, your spouse. And they... I, have a, I have a comment about that coming up soon. <laughs> but be careful, is, right. someone's gonna see this, right? He's watching. <laughs> oh, that, that, is, that is funny. And, 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 and you know what, you need to manage it. You need to manage expectations. And I, and I see this a lot. Uh, an individual will lose 15, 20 pounds in their first two weeks, and then they start doing the math. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, right. that means in, in only two more weeks, I'll be down 40 pounds, and it doesn't work like that. Right. So we have to manage those expectations, and, it, and it's a constant revisiting to so all those little points. I will tell you, coming up with a plan really is key because, for example, my husband and I, during the week, we try really hard to eat really well. Mm -hmm. So we're eating salads, Mondays, Tuesdays, we're adding the proteins. But what I'm finding, when we get to Friday night, we're like, yeah, we got through the week, <laughs> we made it, let's go crazy. So we're ordering pizza, <laughs> let's have some wine, let's have some beer. So how do we kind of retrain ourselves to not jump overboard when the weekend comes? You know, we, we use it as a reward. And, and I think it's built into us. It's also one of the things we teach at our clinics. We change those actual habits through the appointments and, and trying to change that, that psychology. Uh, we're, we're Clevelanders and we're foodies. Right. We, we love our food and we're a lot of uh, different nationalities that get together and we, we tend to reward ourselves with it. So with the kids, how many times have they had good grades or a graduation or a birthday? And what's the first thing we ask? Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> I know, I'm so guilty of this. I know because they like it, I like it. It feels like a natural reward. And it becomes more than a reward though. It, does. it becomes a part of our normal habits and that's very common. We do that throughout the week. We splurge on the weekends. We get on the scale Monday and we're like, son of a gun and we're right back to where we were right. until it creeps up. Yeah. One pound, half a pound every Monday for a year, and we wonder how we put on 20, 30 pounds. Right, and you mentioned kids. I mean, when you're running kids from soccer to baseball to basketball to band, it's hard to make that plan to eat well because you're in the car a majority of the time. So it's like fast food, okay. Yeah, it, it, well, it's, be it's become more convenient, but, yeah. but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, well, how long can we sustain that? Right. And more importantly, and one of the reasons we got into this to begin with 15 years ago, is what do we do into our youth? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if is this really what we want for them? And we see the increase right. in the obesity rates. So we have to change those habits now. There's really no way around it. There's no easy way. We've got to change the habits now instill those in our children so that they can grow up having that just as part of their habit so they're not in the same situation right, right. you and I end up in. So you have an office in Broadview Heights. Broadview you Heights. invite people to come there. You also have a website, healthyoneweightloss.com. And I am adding you to my team, my husband's <laughs> team. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Natalie?